Well, it's, it's a museum that goes back 22 years, um, started by the Chamber of Commerce, and the, the main reason was that when people come to the Cape, come to Hyannis, the number one question is, where is the compound? And so, as people who live here know, you cannot get to the compound. The Chamber uh, decided, uh, two, uh, two women decided to start the museum. So it's been here, it's the John F. Kennedy Hyannis Museum, uh, we are the only site of the John F. Kennedy legacy in the country that focuses on their home, Cape Cod, and, uh, and Hyannis Port. We're the only site that really uh, addresses and brings out the way they lived, uh, both in the sense of Kennedy family and as they lived as neighbors to people who lived here. Well, that was the feeling when I walked through it. It, it wasn't just that I was, I, I didn't expect, it wasn't like a presidential museum as much as it was the life of the Kennedys on the Cape. Correct. It really captured that feeling of a family and community, of multi-generation, of sailing. And I, that was a really, uh, it really gave you, an, it gives, gave me a really nice feeling for them. Well, you know, the, the images really reflect kind of the, uh, the tagline Camelot because it, it really had, they were neighbors to the people who lived in Hyannisport. They went to church. They didn't have the entourage that you have today around a president. You know, people were able to talk with the president. The press would come and sit around his, his uh, back patio and then they'd leave. And they certainly had all the trappings of, of protection and all, but it was, a, it was really a neighbor feel that, that people had. And I think, Jeff, the other part that we're really uh, trying to build out more is the history that took place here while he was president. And there were significant events uh, during his presidency where the Cape was part of that story where things happened here. So we, uh, we're, we're taking the, the legacy and the family side and adding this historical dimension that we will build out uh, both on the cultural side, uh, educational side, and finally on the exhibit side in the museum. So it sounds like when you came in, you've put a lot of effort and work into getting the name out there, reaching out to different organizations. What initiatives have you done to, to make that happen? Uh, good, uh, good question, Rich. I think the, the first is, unfortunately, uh, having been um, in a community banking role, you know, I'm used to being a face, and so there has to be a face to the community. You have to be able to, to be Such visible. Such a good face, we put it on radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, well, I dressed up for this. Next time it's TV. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but no, really, it's, it's a matter of, of um, you, you, you just can't do it. You have to communicate it, and as we were talking earlier, you also have to communicate it in the way communication is going on, social media being a big part of that. And the other part that I think we can do to raise the visibility is be collaborative not-for-profits, back to the funder side, the uh, uh, astute funder foundation looks at how we collaborate in the sense of a not-for-profit. Uh, and so we've made it a point to be collaborative in, uh, with different groups and on, on some of our activities. Uh, that's good for us because it brands us. Uh, secondly, it, it exposes us to people who, who don't know us, so I'm, I'm really bringing a new audience in and, and they're seeing our institution. And, uh, and more importantly, we're adding the dimension of, of uh, uh, the face that we need to have to be effective in that space. So the, you know, we can keep growing the, the application of the, of the work of the museum and frankly, we can grow uh, the interest in some exhibits. We've gained ideas for exhibits in some of these events. So it, it's a long journey.